on in Wolfpack Nation. Thank you so much again for tuning back in here for part two of our interview here with uh, UNC fam. But again, level-headed. Yeah, I mean, he was, he, he was a three he generation. Be, he, I think I heard him say go pack on the end of the last episode, right? I, I, I don't, you know. <laughs> He's like, no, no, I, no, I he think, didn't say that. I think it, I think <laughs> we it, have to edit that over. I think it cut right before we said it, but you know, what we could do is we can like do like the thing where we can like pick like little pieces of what he says and like when we put it all together, it makes it sound like he says go pack. So maybe we could do something like that. I don't know. We could figure it out. But uh, yeah, but again, so just a little bit of background again, obviously he's a three gener- three three generation Carolina fan. So, you know, hey, I mean, much respect. And again, if you haven't checked out part one, definitely go check that out first. As again, we uh, definitely – I think learned a lot, but also too, you know, had a little bit of smack talk here and there, you know, a little fun smack talk. Can't, you know, can't, can't, can't get away from it. But now we're getting some more of the stuff where we feel like we have a little bit of the upper hand here, which is obviously with the football side. So, so Mackenzie, I know, uh, you, you know, obviously you and, and your your lovely wife enjoy, uh, joined us at the uh, uh, the, t- the tailgate before the State Carolina game. You and I were talking about the game and all that jazz. So, um, so kind of tell me, I mean. What were your thoughts walking? Like, so first of all, when did you leave the game? I mean, did you stay for the whole game? I stayed for the entire game. And, Dang. You know, That's unfortunately. For you. Good for you. Well, first of all, no, good for you. Sat, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> unfortunately, we sat, we sat through the pain and the misery of, uh, of, of watching our poor coaching staff, you know, uh, cost us the game and, and poor leadership from the players. So, uh, what, what, but, that uh, great yeah, that coach, was Mac t- Brown, make a mistake? <laughs> what? Yeah. That uh, I don't know who the special teams coach was, but I'll have to go back and check. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they <laughs> might anymore. need to work on that. Yeah, we might need to work on that a little bit. Well, I, but but yeah, definitely stay to the end of the game. At what point when you watched that game did you actually think State was going to win when they scored the second touchdown? So I kid you not, um, we're, y'all were down by two touchdowns, and we're sitting there. So we actually had uh, play. Well, we were sitting where the players' uh, parents were. Um, we were sitting not far from Layton as well, but, um, we, uh, we were actually sitting near some state fans and the guy that was standing next to me, he was a pretty nice guy for the most part, you know, respectful. And, um, I was sitting there talking to him. I said, man, I said, I just got a bad feeling here. And that he said, what do you mean? I said, well, I said, I've got a really bad feeling. You guys are about to go down and score a touchdown, come back, kick an onside kick, get the, get the recovery, go down and score again and go up on us. I said, I've got a bad feeling. Interesting. And, um, Sure, sure enough, like I, I spoke it into existence, and my fiance, she was standing right next to me and heard every bit of it. And I said, I, I knew this was going to happen. Wow. And well, why uh, to, did to you actually think see that? It, why did you think that? You, you, you never can, you never can th- think you've got You're, a game. You can say you're a real fan, right? Because you never trust it until it's over. Yeah, I never, I never believe it until it's over. So I, I mean, I'm, if you, if you. you're, a tr- if you're a true fan, you know, no matter what school you you cheer, cheer for or root for every day it's not ever to the clock says zero and the whistles have been blown. So um, for them to actually, you know, do that, it, it was, it was shocking, but you know, at the same time, it come down to poor coaching for me and a lack of leadership on the field. So, so well, yeah. then let me ask you it's, this. What are your thoughts generally about Mac Brown? Because when he was hired, I kind of thought, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to hate. I don't care. I was like, I thought really like, that's what I thought. I, I, and I, and it was because, I thought Carolina could go and do better than that. And I thought it, I don't even know the word was safe hire. It was was just kind of easy, nostalgic. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, well, he's an older guy. He's, he was in broadcasting and I was like, well, he's not going to be able to really like recruit. Well, I didn't think. And I think he's recruited well. well. I mean, relatively yeah, speaking, yeah. and <laughs> well, he that, shows him the so, ring from 2004 or whatever year that was. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, but that's what hangs, I just yeah, was like, I didn't get it. And I mean, I know that was it was it the first year or second year that he was doing. He did pretty well. Was it? It was two. Well, he's years, only been two there two years ago. He's been there three. Years. He's been there year. for this is his fourth year coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was his second right. year? You're right, making. Yeah, his second, second year. year. So I thought, I thought, okay, well, maybe I'm going to have to eat my my own thoughts and words here. But obviously last year was like, okay, that was a train wreck. So what were your thoughts about him getting hired in the first place? Man, honestly, I think that what Carolina thought, you know, and and we all thought was back, you know, him in the 90s, you know, the the era that he really led Carolina to be and the team that he had, you know, 
I think that they were thinking that he was going to come back in and, and really kind of bring that same momentum that he had down in Texas and back with us in the 90s. And, you know, for him to come back to Carolina was was not a favorite of mine by all means. But, uh, you know, I, I think that it was not the best decision we could have made as far as coaching wise. I think there were many better options on the table possibly. But for him, you know, the expectations were – I wouldn't say necessarily so high when he first came back because, you know, coming from the Larry Fedora era uh, to him, yeah. you know, that's a, <laughs> that was a big change. But, uh, yeah. um, I, I, I wasn't a, a big fan of him to begin with, but, you know, as the, the season kind of grew into the second year, like Greg was saying, um, you know, he, the momentum was kind of stepped up from what Sam had offered on the table, what he brought, you know, uh, as a whole. But, you know, I don't, I don't really, I wouldn't say I'm a big uh, uh Fan of his, to say the least, uh, because he, he seems very selfish. But uh, who's this? You know, we'll see how Hal? this next year. Uh, or uh, Brown? no, Matt. Oh, Matt, okay. yeah. Interesting. Well, I'm uh, interested. Why do you think he's selfish? I'm just curious. He just, honestly, man, all he cares about, I feel like, is just recruits and and trying to win. And uh, you know, I get it. It's college football. We all want to win, but at one point in time, you know, you got to kind of back down off the table and you know see what is it from players perspectives that they need to be successful as well. So I, I think at one, I think what you're not to put words in your mouth, but you're tired of seeing him win the off season. You want to see him win it during the season, right? Because he yeah, has now, these, these recruiting classes. Come what in I'm hearing year is that he's, he's also, 15. what I'm hearing too, is that he's saying that it's more like, I don't want to say a character thing, but it's more like who the players are as a person versus just an athlete too, that you it's, that's what I'm kind of hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the expectations had been really high. I mean, he, we, you know, we Carolina had came in in the preseason, so I think ranked like 10 in the mm-hmm. country. And, you know, for us to come in and put the kind of statistics that we did and the outcome we had on season, you know, and then with him getting the contract extension, you know, many Carolina fans were kind of upset about that and they paid him more money and gave him a contract extension. Yeah. You know, we kind of haven't seen the results we've been hoping to see, um, you know, but maybe – we can turn things around, you know. I'm I yeah. always got to be hopeful as a yeah. Carolina fan. Well, that's Steve. That's that's way. So I feel like I feel like Carolina in football right now is is not I don't know if it's that bad, but it's kind of like where state no, fans are with basketball. It's kind of like <laughs> you're just kind of like all like okay, maybe maybe next year it'll be the one. Maybe next year be the one. I always felt like Carolina <laughs> can get like. I feel like Carolina always recruits well mm-hmm. for football. I feel like they always do. They they always have like five, six, seven, four stars. And the rest mm-hmm. of three stars, kind of like NC State, but State usually gets like has historically gotten more like four, five, five, four star kind of players. And it's like then we mm-hmm. so Carolina always was always better in the recruiting rankings, but then I always thought Carolina just never could do anything with it on the football field, like to what the hype was. And yeah. so obviously State fans would pick on Carolina, and like they're just a bunch of hype, like it's the same kind of thing all over again. They're the, the media darling. They bring in the yeah. bucks because it's Carolina brand. And, but I'm curious what you think Carolina football needs to do to get to where, I mean, you want it to be like what practical steps they need to do. Is it totally change the hood? Like head coach has got to go or does Mac Brown need to change coordinators? Is it what system? What do you think? Honestly, I think it's it's the coaching staff. If you ask me, um, you know I, there are a lot of plays. You know, I, I don't. I'm not a big fan of Phil Longo. Um, really, but you know he'd been an offensive coordinator. Um, you know, we just slung the ball around everywhere with with Sam. You know, and, and the offense he likes to run. So, I, I'm not a big fan of him and the play calling he has. Um, but you know, hopefully that'll get better. But I, I definitely think from a we've got the talent, but it's it all comes down to. How do we how do we transition the talent to success on the field? You know, we may can do it in practice or the off season, but how do we transition that to game time when it's time to you know yeah. tighten things up and, and actually put the ball in play? Mm-hmm. And I thought I thought Carolina, if they could just have sustained success, find a coach, sustain, it's over recruiting. I feel like not over, but it's like they could go get anybody they want because it's a brand, a Carolina. I mean, and again, this is where I would kind of want to segue into this. <laughs> How do you feel about a basketball player logo on football jerseys? I, I'm not too fond of it. I didn't know. I was curious. Good. I know some people like, oh, I Good. love Michael Jordan. And I feel like a lot of players, people play, growing up, they just love Michael Jordan. And Carolina is always on their mind. And that's 
to Carolina's benefit, but but I what what I think was worse is like Michigan and Florida use him. I'm like, why? Just put the Nike swoosh on your uniform and and keep it moving. Like, mm-hmm. there's no there's no practical reason why you would put Michael Jordan on a Florida football jersey. And, like, and while we're at it, zero sense. What is up with the Argyle man? Argyle. <laughs> Do you like the Argyle? The Argyle, oh, wow. the little diamond pattern on the football jerseys. Do you like it? <laughs> I know. I always. That's one of my. That's one of my. That's one of my go tos. That, that looks better on, on a golfer. I, I would agree. I, but I, I like the Jordan logo better than I do. Um, the the, the yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm I can not, agree with that. But it's it's just funny to me. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's definitely interesting to me how how Jordan definitely transitioned from the basketball world to to trying to you know sponsor the football. I don't know if that was a requirement by uh, the ACC or if it was university. No. But that's definitely an interesting, you know, term to put that on the football jersey. So yeah. it's, just it's just a global money. brand. Yeah. yeah. But I think but to, I think making to to where Money, you were yeah. maybe going is if you can get that um if you can get that football program going, you know, then you have you can recruit off of the basketball program, right? Like so when you bring a recruit in, it's like, oh, like we're gonna be a top ten football team. Oh, by the way, you can go watch the final four. With well, and you can also get these. Yeah, you can go. You can go sit, Michael. Yeah, you can go sit in there on the same court Michael Jordan played. And hello, there's Roy. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and hey, look up here. Like I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I truly believe a lot of recruits when they commit to Carolina are doing it because of the nostalgia of the basketball team. And I feel like, because I don't, I have not seen a lot of like, like, like Lawrence Taylor, of course, like Sam Howell now, of course, like. Um, Julius Ray Peppers, Bly, of, like obviously Julius Peppers, like some great Mr. Bisky, mi- yeah, Mr. Bisky, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just feel like it's it. There's such a draw from the basketball history that it's like, well, I'm just picking Carolina. It, I already have a lean to Carolina just because of that, and it's a motive. It is a motivator when it's like if I can commit to Carolina, then I know I'm going to also get to watch good basketball. So. So I, I have a question about football. What is your take on removing all of those seats from Keenan? Like, what does that say about your football program that you're willing to remove? Like, oh 8, come on, you just seats. set them up right. in a negative light like that, man. Sheesh. No, I just I'm I'm what? What are we doing here? <laughs> I love no, it. But I get, no. a question. What are your thoughts? I like. Did you know they? I were like the seats. seats. I like the seats personally because that's where I sit for the games. <laughs> okay. My 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 back was in uh, a lot of pain during the NC State Carolina game, so we've got to keep the seat backs. <laughs> yeah, I will so, say. So in fairness, I, so in fairness, would you rather have more fans or comfortability? And I, I'm, comfortability. I'm being serious. Yeah. <laughs> comfortability. <laughs> Even as a young hey, buck, my back. He's hurting. honest. <laughs> he's. I don't blame you, man. Because like enough. like with with the state, state has bleachers still, but yeah, it. It, um, I mean, state fills up Carter Finley Stadium, so it doesn't. You don't really see the bleachers. But now, if you look at the end zone on some field goals, it looks terrible. But sure. in yeah. some games, but like I know that was also for like years. That's what state fans would pick on Carolina about is like, look at all the aluminum. So, <laughs> and it would just be like that. But I mean, I don't mind it. I think it. I think Carolina probably got tired of hearing it too. So that, that was a big. Yeah. Thing. It, it did look bad on TV, and I think the blue seats now, it's comfortable. Yeah. It looks better. So, any thoughts on that, Mackenzie? Yeah, no. I want to let, let you back you back yourself up. Yeah, no, man. Trust me. Like I said, I, I'm part of the Rams club. So when my season tickets yeah. come through and I get to choose my seats, you know, every three years, I, I pick the seat backs. So, <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. I, let me ask you this. Yeah. Did, that's have you looked at the ticket the season coming up? Is there any games that excite you? Uh, probably the Notre Dame game this year. Okay. You know. We we haven't had any success beating them uh, for some reason. I, I'm not sure what's going on with that school, but you know we we just can't seem to kind of get a hold of them and figure out their scheme of of how they run the game. Um, but I'm hoping this year when they come to uh, Keenan that we can actually turn things around. But we'll see. Yeah, I hear there's a top ten team coming in there at the end of the year. You might might be interested, be interested in that game. <laughs> you know, I, I might I, be interested in that game. Yes, I would be curious about the. Um, I got, I got, I got a lot of questions to ask about this, but I'm curious. <laughs> I'd be curious to see the UNC versus Virginia Tech game, which comes the week after, because it's a new coach there, and they beat you guys opening weekend last season. And I just think I, I've always said Virginia Tech is the NC State of Virginia. They're the same kind of people. UVA is just like Absolutely. the Carolina of Virginia. Absolutely, but that's again, I'd be interested in. Um, but I'm curious too, and then I'll stop talking for a little bit. Um, <laughs> I love it. Good. 
Sam Howell's gone. Who's going to be the next quarterback? That's something that I've really contemplated on, and I think that we're going to struggle at the QB position this year. Honestly, we, we are, but, you know, Jacoby Criswell, um, he's had two years to sit behind Sam Howell, learn, kind of grow as a person. He was a four-star um, guy, But honestly, he? you said what now? Is he a four-star guy, I think, Jacoby Criswell? Yeah, I believe he was a four-star when he came in. He may be a three-star. Um, but, you know, him coming in, you know, he's got – he's been able to sit behind Sam Howell for two years, but – um, you know, you got Drake May coming in as a freshman. Uh, you know, that's that's huge. He flipped yeah. from going to Alabama to coming to Carolina, but he has a legacy at Carolina. So, you know, it's definitely going to come down to the wire, in my opinion, on who they do start at quarterback for Carolina. Uh, I believe that I really wouldn't be surprised if they start, you know, do a kind of a, a half and half and have Jacoby sure. start one game and have Drake start another because – it's going to come down to the absolute wire on who starts because they both look great. I actually went to the spring game and uh, was able to watch both guys play. And I mean, they both can throw it well. Um, they both can, you know, get out of the pocket and scramble. So it's, it's really going to be an interesting factor for the coach and staff at Carolina to choose who, who gets QB one for Carolina this year. Yeah. yeah Chris Well was a four star guy. I just looked it up. And obviously yeah. everybody, I think, I think people think people forget about Chris Well, cause they haven't really seen him. Yeah. And I think everybody knows about Drake may cause he was a, higher ranked, more name kind of guy, commit Alabama and decided to come play for his dad's alma mater. But um and that's his brother too, right? Luke? Yeah. If Luke May's his brother. So I mean yeah. he's like I said, he's got that yeah. legacy the there. Eyebrows, yeah, clout. Yeah. The eyebrows himself. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Uh, I, that was a guy now not to get too bad in basketball, but I was always like Luke May, I couldn't believe that he hit those shots he was making. Like when he made them for big shot for that was no I was like, how is this I, happening? But every um, single Every single time he was on the court, I just kept asking myself, how, why are they letting this 32-year-old guy play basketball right now? Like, seriously, that dude's been there forever. And, and, he, he would and... destroy YMCAs, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress-Up Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessup protects the things you love so you can spend less time worrying and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Long story short, this is kind of off topic, but in uh, in high school, my senior year, he actually um, he actually played at our high school for the um, – N- oh, not NCAA, but uh, – the uh the high school tournament that they play in and they came and played here and i actually got to watch him in person and in high school he was even just as good as he is in high school the hairiest dude i've ever met <laughs> <laughs> i love it that's, that, that's more, such but... a weird statement but i get it yeah. <laughs> it's so true the, the dude if the dude Sasquatch more... was a basketball player it would be luke may <laughs> It would have been Luke May. Yeah, I love so. it. Well, let me ask you this: You see, you went in the spring game. I was thinking about this too. You, Ty Chandler's gone, so you had you had Javante Williams. You had uh, who was the uh, Michael Carter? Carter, Carter, who went to the Jets, and now you Ty Chandler's yep. gone. The run, what do the running backs look like? I think really often, you know, that's a good question as well. Um, but I think offensively wise, Carolina is really going to struggle. You're not going to see the statistics and the numbers being put up like you, you used to see. Well, um, you know, Sam Howell had quite back. a bit of yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, not not only that, but then you've got you got two offensive linemen that had left up this, this year as well. So that's going to kind of hurt. Although we did pick up Corey Seegers and um, the kid from Harvard as well, which are both offensive linemen. Corey will, I believe, Corey will start this year. He was a four year starter for Miami. Uh, center so you know him coming on and being a veteran I think that'll definitely help our offensive line and uh, Zach Rice as well uh, that's that's a big pickup he he looked very very good in the spring game as well um, but I, I think we're going to struggle offensively wise uh, we do have uh, um, oh what's his name it's left my, left my mind now yeah. uh, running back I can't think of his name right off uh, it's left my no, mind no, but, but number 24 way. last year he he has he absolutely destroyed your your defense last year in the UNC versus. Oh NC State yeah game. yeah yeah I know who you're talking about. Yeah, in that yeah. Carolina yeah. game, uh, the state, yeah. state Carolina football game, he was the lone bright spot I thought for Carolina yeah. offensively. Yeah. I can't and remember. Josh Downs. 
No. Josh Downs is going to be a, a key. I, I will tell you right yeah. now, and I'm going to mark this so I can come back and watch this video on uh, YouTube, but uh, Josh Downs will be the leading reception wide receiver for, for college football this upcoming year. So, Okay. Well, I, 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 I actually can't believe that. I actually can't believe that. <laughs> But assuming you have a quarterback that gets it to him, well, I mean, there, there's we gotta have a quarterback get it to well, him, and that's the thing. But yeah, he's he's a stud. Well, and again, that, and, well, and again, that's the thing. Is I, know, alum I, know, too. I yeah, yeah, that's true. Be. I know. Now, yeah. now, now, I know you, you, uh, Mackenzie. You and I had this conversation, and, and we'll kind of you know fill it in here as well. But you know, obviously, talking before the Carolina State game, one of the things that we were talking about was that it's so odd to me how you know even though for two years beforehand that Mac Brown did so well on the recruiting trail, but yet this year, like literally the offense and you, and like every single game, like for the Virginia tech game, every single game from there on out, it was literally, if you want to stop UNC's offense, you got to stop Sam Howell and Josh Downs. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's it. Like there's no, like the offensive line is terrible. There's no other wide receivers. Ty Chandler, eh? like, you know, it was, it was literally just stop Josh down, stop Sam Howell. That's it. And so, like, I mean, it was like, you know, what, what do you have? I mean, like, what, like, it's almost like, what do you have to say about that? But it's like, it's like, <laughs> but like, like they've been killing on the recruiting trail. How do you really only have Sam Howell and Josh Downs in the offense? Yeah, no, and I, I think that's another th uh, position that's actually going to kill us this year as well is, you know, everybody knew what we did last year, um, but a lot of people are going to question what is Carolina going to do this year? You know, not having that quarterback, at, you know, to be able to throw the ball to Josh Downs. And, and like Greg mentioned it, you got to be able to get the ball to him. So mm -hmm. uh, my, my concern is, is we've got receivers, but are we only going to target one receiver? When you go back and look at the statistics, the statistics for the 2020 uh, one season, you know, you look at Josh Downs' receptions and his yardage and look at our other receivers, it's like That's the margins ball. are completely different. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of nervous to see how the yeah. receiver position turns out, you know. I think that's why you saw a couple guys leave at the receiver position. Uh, Diami's brother um, left as well. Uh, he transferred down to, I think, uh, South Florida. So, you know, a lot of kids saw the writing on the wall, uh, you know, when Josh Downs was the number one target every time, every game. Yeah. Um, but I'm definitely going to be interested, and that's one of the positions I'm going to keep my eye on is, is who are we targeting offensively-wise for receivers. Didn't yeah. didn't Gene Chizik come back to Carolina? Isn't he the D.C.? now yeah, yeah. So, so he did this come is like back. his second go his second go around so that's i think that's another thing that that mac does he likes to do retreads like he he likes yeah. to try to re relive his glory days and, and well i mean well, obviously we'll see how it works out for him but yeah eh, yeah i mean there's a reason why he's gotten fired multiple places so well <laughs> but i mean the one thing i will say is i mean again gene i mean in not necessarily in gene chizik's defense but like like he like he was killing it he was actually part of the he was part of the team that made it to ACC championship and lost to Clemson, and then he basically stepped away. So he, I mean, he wasn't fired. So, but I mean, again, I mean, no, not this time, not, not this, this go not this I mean, time. But <laughs> hey, it, it's a new opportunity. Yeah. But um, so, right. so Mackenzie, so let me ask you this because this is something I, I definitely really wanted to ask you because I know this is something you and I actually haven't talked about, but it was something which was discussed after uh, the South Carolina UNC game. And that is talking about Sam Howell and his legacy a little bit. Because obviously, I think all of us, even state fans included, all fans across the board can easily say without a doubt, respect is deserved, that he arguably is easily in the conversation is probably one of the most talented quarterbacks in the history of the ACC. I mean, that dude was unbelievable in terms of talent-wise. Then obviously That's seeing what he did. His... That's a bold, yeah. bold statement. Man. I saw make it die. You were like, what? <laughs> I was going to say, that's my right hold there. On. <laughs> but hold on. Did you not hear that I said he's uh, he is in the conversation as one of the greatest? I'm not saying he is yeah, the greatest. I'm you. saying he's in the I conversation. <laughs> and, but also, too, he, because I would also, say this. Hmm. He is definitely, in my opinion, the most talented He's the greatest quarterback UNC's ever had. I thought for say sure. That. Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred. Yeah. One hundred percent. I'd have to agree with Macon on that. Is yeah. he's definitely the greatest quarterback that's ever walked through the campus of UNC. But but because because when I Which say that too, say a lot. Because when I say that too, I'm saying that because I mean, look at what he did with literally just Josh Downs. Like he literally carried UNC's offense last year, and pretty much all the points that were scored ba were basically because of Sam Howell. So I'm literally saying that I think if you, if Mac Brown actually gave him some weapons that you could have easily seen, yeah, there's no doubt he is. But it, so, so again, that's why I'm not sitting here saying he oh, is the greatest. Uh, there's no doubt about <laughs> I mean, it that there's, he, there's better, but. Uh, anyway, he definitely did more with less last year. Even a ton with the less. hype was more 
even though the hype was more last year than the previous year, which is insane if you think about it that right. way. And that he, fact that he had to he had to make up his own plays, if you will. Like he had to make something out of nothing on a lot of stuff. Like whether it was a you know a fifty fifty ball breaking the pocket, trying to get yards that way. Like he he literally did more with less, and so. And I'll give him that, but not not one of the greatest of all time in the well, ACC. Well, and again, keep in mind I, when I say talent too, as well. Again, talent wise, it, it was it was know. unreal too. We, can, so. we maybe we'll leave it at that. We'll just go with that and move along. So, we'll take this okay. offline. No, yes, no, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean he. I mean, for him to accomplish what he accomplished in three him. years with the weapons he had, you know, it, it's it's uncalled for, especially in the ACC. You know, you, you start look, going back and looking at some of the greatest quarterbacks, you know, that we've had in the ACC as a whole, you know, Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence and, you know, the new generation Rivers, of quarterbacks. that Philip Rivers. Yep. Yep. Philip Rivers. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he paused on Philip Rivers. <laughs> uh, Russell Wilson. Well, we're, we're talking, let, let's talk more newer generation. <laughs> but, uh, Russell but, Wilson. yeah, you know, I mean, he, he, he's definitely <laughs> – he's definitely put up some great numbers especially with the weapons that he did have but you go back and like i said look at guys like trevor lawrence and the guys he had you know that he had options to throw to and get the ball to yeah. it yeah. was just Abundance uh, outstanding yeah uh you know to to really accomplish what he accomplished you know if we had a year where we had a a De'Ami brown and a daz newsome and you know three years with people like that that he could throw to I, I would I wouldn't even with a doubt in my mind think that he could throw for fourteen thousand passing yards in three seasons. Sure, you know, I, that's I am just. Kind of, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm I am kind of surprised that he's not getting as much hype and love in the NFL draft. Um, that there's others that are that are ahead of him. Just having seen him, like there's no doubt in my mind that Sam Howell is a better quarterback than Malik Will, uh, Malik Wilson. Willis. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that he's a better quarterback than him. Um, and and I, I would put him up against the uh, the Cincinnati quarterback. What's it, Ritter? I think yeah, Ritter. R I D D E R. Yeah, I think he, yeah. I think he's a better quarterback than than him to him as well. Wow. So yeah. I don't know. I I, I mean I. I, but so you're talking potential, right? Like yeah. last year, obviously Cincinnati had a better year than Carolina, so that that definitely helps the conversation. But but what are your thoughts on that, McKenzie? About like Sam not getting as much love in the draft? Yeah, I, I really don't like it either. Um, you know, I looked at several draft stocks, and you know, I've seen that they've got them going as as early as the Panthers, uh, which I think is the sixth pick in the draft this year. So. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't, I don't like it either. But it looks like the the mocks that I've looked at have Malik Willis going uh, number two overall um, as the first QB in the draft. Which, I mean, he has a little bit more mobility in the pocket. But you know, overall, I think Sam Howe is is probably the best quarterback out of the draft this year, in my opinion. And I'm not being biased just because I'm a Carolina fan. It's just because I know what potential he has down the road. Mm -hmm. And I think that Malik has a, a more of an advantage than uh, Sam does. It's just because. He's it's been related style. to, well, yeah, he's been related to as like a Lamar Jackson. So, right. you know, you look at the su success that Lamar's had in the, the lead so far, they look at him similar, you know, game style. But S I think Sam Mahomes is, and... Sam, wherever Sam lands at, I think that he'll have a great, you know, career in the NFL. And I hope he does. You know, I hope he doesn't turn out like a Mitch Trubisky. But... <laughs> you know, what I think of Sam Howell, to be honest, I think his most similar comparison, maybe, I don't know, maybe people some people will laugh at this, but I think, I really think it is, um, Baker Mayfield. That's what I think. I can see it, that's honestly. Horrible. I think that's a very good Short, comparison stocky, to compare kind of him to. quarterback who can throw. Yep. He's not – he can run, but he's not really a runner, but he can. So – Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he I'm became a – he, he definitely himself. became – <laughs> no, no absolutely not. he he definitely became a runner and that was one of the things i really wanted to see out of sam when he first got to carolina is i wanted to see him run the ball more he took so many sacks in his first year and you know the second and third year was like run 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 i was like this dude's gonna get like smacked on the yeah, next play if he don't stop running right mm -hmm. and uh you know but I, I think the draft stock has really kind of upset me a little bit but uh i definitely could see him going you know number two qb number three qb overall wow I, honestly, I've seen him. I've seen him uh, four or five QB in some of the mocks. Yeah. Um, my my one thing with Sam Howell is, and then you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, but he just excelled two seasons ago, and when he came back, the expectations were through. The roof. I don't know if it's because the expectations were too high, but I did not see him progress as a quarterback. Weapons, in my opinion, I think. He probably ran the ball a little bit more than because he because he had to, 
Um, his, his team needed him to be able to do that, to be able to win. But I didn't see him take the leap in passing. I always thought of Sam. I think of Sam Howell as like a an, an elite, a a great. I don't know if the word is elite, but a, a great deep ball thrower. And like he just had his touch on the deep ball was is is real. I mean, hard to come by. Uh, by most quarterbacks historically, can do that. Um, and I and I was not. I just didn't see the progression there. And I don't know if that, is that. Am I wrong on that? Is it? No. Yeah, and I, I think you have a valid point there. You know, not being biased from a Carolina standpoint either. Sure. But, sure. Yeah. Uh, if you go back and look at the players that we did lose uh, in, in the second year, his sophomore right. year to his junior year. You know, that's a that's insane. that takes you. You take Diami, you take Diaz, you take uh, Javante and Mike out of the equation. That's four NFL yeah, that's starters right now. That's a good point. God, so, man. you know, when we come into his junior year, we've got da- uh, Josh Downs, you know, one of the highest wide receivers in the country as far as, you know, recruit wise. I mean, he's by far the only option we've got on offense. You know, bringing Ty Chandler in as a veteran from Tennessee was a big pickup for us because we didn't have someone there at the time that knew how to actually, you know, take that role over and lead it. But to have him lead now, I actually looked up the guy's name that we were talking British about earlier. Brooks. Um, British Brooks was his name, but, uh, yeah, to have him, you know, move on in there now, we'll see how he plays out. But, you know, I think it all boils down to the options he really had offensively wise from his sophomore to junior year. So I think the expectation was more on the team and not so much on Sam, but by proxy, it becomes Sam's expectation. Well, yeah. Well, and again, it was, it was literally the, the fact too, that again, I mean, it, it's and again that's why like literally in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself there's like there's no doubt that I, I truly stand by my statement just because of the fact that I mean dude like that guy literally every single time he dropped back to pass he was running for his life and he only had one guy he could throw to or run and he still put up all those passing yards and did all and, and score as many points as he did pretty much running for his life every single play so so that's why again I mean now that he's not for you know, even though I'm sure he'll be on the commercial, I am. I'll put it this way. I'm glad he's know. gone. <laughs> yeah, no, I am. A, I'm hey, very and, glad he's gone. This, this is kind of a, a food for thought, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, Craig, but no, um, at one point in time, I, I'm like a big statistics guy. I try to keep up with it anyways. But at one point in time in the season, uh, for Sam's junior year, I was actually looking. Our offensive line sucked so bad that uh, he was the most sacked quarterback in college football among any D1 um college yeah. football program in the country so i mean really and truly our offensive line just absolutely sucked terribly bad oh, yeah. their his senior year and i think that kind of plays a, a big toll you know your own lines your your heart and soul of that that team so if they can't You're protect you games. like late and say yeah. he, he was running for dear life every every play he had almost so i would agree for sure yeah. I would agree all right with you. well mckenzie we've had fun uh you know uh, you know appreciate it you know thank you so much for coming on brother and uh again uh you know appreciate you be one of the the fans out there that again <laughs> I, that i think all of us want all fans to be that's including state you know i mean i think you know all of us wish but i mean obviously from the Carolina side we, we hope that there's more people that 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 thought like you you know level heavy you know not like crazy lunatic <laughs> off the wall kind of deal so we appreciate it but thanks for being a good sport by the way yeah absolutely it. hey absolutely man absolutely well thank absolutely well thank you all so much again for tuning in as always make sure once again hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out give this video a like because it really helps support us a lot and also to give us a follow a toughy talk now on twitter or instagram but thank you all so much and hey as always go pack y'all <laughs>